Right. This is the last Kalogni Kai by Yodalorian. It stars Katara, Zuko, and Azula, and they're all Pop Tarts. Zutara, but they're Pop Tarts. Yeah, but they're Pop Tarts. They are just Pop Tarts. What's the matter? Popco shouted. No lightning today. Pop Zula growled, hair crust crumbling and shedding crumbs all over the kitchen counter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fuck's sake. Yeah. So you have... Uh, hold up, hold up. No, no, no. Stop right there. Zuko <laughs> eats Azula. <laughs> really? No, no, no. <laughs> no. As in the Pop-Tart Azula. Yeah, like the real-life Zuko. There's a Pop-Tart Zuko. called Azula? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for fuck's sake, I had no idea that was a Pop-Tart. I was like, no. <laughs> yeah, so the thick is, it's a Pop-Tart AU. Popco, as in Zuko, <laughs> yeah. with a Pop-Tart. Pop-Zula. Like, Pop-Zula, who is a Pop-Tart, but Azula. Once that fight is over, actual Zuko comes in and just eats them. Yeah. I I I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know. <laughs> I feel like this is a story Soccer is doing with his Pop Tarts. Zuko comes out of nowhere and just eats them <laughs> to kill his fun. Like like you spend ages on a sand castle and then mm-hmm. the dragon comes along and fucking kicks it over. You just like twat. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I can believe that. <laughs> That's a very weird find, thank you. It, yeah, it's very... This... So, yeah, we can talk about the bullshit I've been dealing with at work. Go on then, office hypocrisy. So, yeah, go. typically we normally talk about Grace's chaotic factory drama Yes. Uh, when we start the show. Starting the show, hello, welcome to the Shipping Forecast, <laughs> by the way. I'm James, joining me is Grace. Hello. And Nick. Hi. And I really need to start getting the habit of doing that. Uh, yeah, so my job is less exciting, it's general office stuff. But the past two weeks have been very stressful because there's been a dickhead that I've been having to deal with. Oh yes, we've all got one of them. Yep, one hundred percent. So, so my role is normally sort of data based and sort of I'm the guy who does the work, and then everyone else around me is sales who talk about me doing the work. Ah, <laughs> uh, I see. So yeah, you do the work, other people do the glory. Mm-hmm, more yeah. or less. And but this guy in particular, not only wanted the glory, but believed he could do it all himself, <laughs> to the point where. Despite his job being sort of... His job is sort of to organise the meetings and make sure everything is running smoothly. Yeah. But he took his role as being, I can do everything, no one else needs to even speak to clients. <laughs> so he... He just stopped inviting anyone else to calls. And whenever he wasn't sure of something, I'd get a message being like, Yo, James, can you join this call? It's happening right now. I need someone to explain something. Oh, that, yeah, that fucks me off. Some of rotten. And that fucks me off. Yeah. And for the first, when that happened the first time, I was like, oh, you must have forgot me off the invite. Okay, yeah, no problem. I'll show up. I'll do it. And then next week, the same thing happened. And I was like, oh, two in a row, starting to take this personally. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, by the fifth time, I decided, <laughs> no, fuck you. Not dealing with this anymore. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I wrote a long letter to his boss. <laughs> <laughs> I say letter and not email because I, I wrote it in Word first and it did fill the page. So this this wasn't just a, hi, this guy's a knobhead. It was more, here is a list of reasons why this man is a knobhead. Yeah. I'm sad that you didn't get out parchment, quill and ink. Oh, I was tempted <laughs> and, like, to hand deliver it, a, to a be nice, honest. A nice sealed letter in wax oh, that with been your good. Like, crest on a ring stamp. Like, oh, I'll be honest. Been, classy. <laughs> I, f- I felt less like a medieval knight writing this diss and more like a scientist working at Chernobyl, sort of writing this list of, here are my concerns this cannot continue, I am hereby resigning my commission. <laughs> uh, it all felt very dramatic. My boss received it and went yep, thank you, we'll deal with this. Yeah. Sure enough, one week later, it's dealt with. He's gone. Oh my god. Hey. Oh my god, you got well, someone fired. Not fired, sorry. He's gone from the thing I work on with him. Okay. As far as I'm aware, he is still at the company. He's okay. going to be well pissed off with you. Here's the twist, though. Okay. Oh, there's a twist. It wasn't even me in the end. Oh. Because for all my writing in, 
that didn't mean nothing, because the client also wrote in, saying, this man is getting in the way of us talking to the people that do the work, can he please be removed? Wow. Oh, yeah. The client. Oh, yeah. the client. So they came in to complain and say, no, this is just making life difficult for us, because he doesn't invite anyone to calls and tries to answer it himself. And then the message nice. gets relayed to me and the other teams, which makes it even harder. That. So they ended up getting it removed. That has never happened in my seven years working at this place. That's fucking incredible. Yeah. Fantastic timing as well, and I feel very validated that yeah. they were seeing the exact same complaints I was seeing. This this is it. At least um, you know. At least you and the and the client were sort of singing from the same hymn sheet. Mm. I had a no, suspicion is... they were because they started emailing me directly if they wanted like a straightforward answer. Yeah, it's just peak office. This isn't it. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this is peak middle aged office problems. I'm, I'm thirty, Grace. No, I'm, like, <laughs> this is no, but like it's the genre. <laughs> yeah, the genre of like. This tea is... <laughs> That's fair. It's it's not a fight in the car park that you were hoping for. Not what I'm used to, <laughs> It's no. not me tricking someone into putting a spoon in the microwave and seeing what would happen. It's... I didn't trick them, he was just an idiot. Yeah, I... <laughs> you see what I mean? Um, it, It's a weird time. I'm sorry my drama doesn't end in a sword fight, but see, who knows? I... I've seen him doing it on other clients, so maybe it will one day. Oh, that's it. See, that's the problem with um, working from home, is that because you're not face-to-face -face with your colleagues, you can't literally bear tackle them to the floor. That's true. Which is really <laughs> irritating. I mean, we're in next week. Oh! <laughs> yeah. oh so there's still yes. time. There's, there's still time. There's coronation-themed stuff happening. and Do you want my royal bat? Absolutely. You have a royal bat? Uh, I'm just saying royal because it's in time for the coronation, but it's just a bat. Yeah. Okay. You stick it, <laughs> it's what stick I fix all my it. technological problems. With. <laughs> Incidentally, for you guys, does it still feel weird saying the king? Yes. Because yeah. I don't know what we it... We grew like, up with a queen. If, if you say, like, the queen said this, it's like, yeah, that's an ordinary sentence. But if it's, the king has, decree has said this, you're like, oh, we're in a fantasy setting now. This, yeah, oh, this yeah. is it. And yeah. like, even though they are technically similar crazy titles, when you really think about it, it, yeah, it feels like we've twisted from like normal days to a feudal system. I don't know. I feel like we lost significant girl boss power losing the queen. Yes, we did. Yeah, this is the thing. I, I always I mean, expect it to come through instead of King Charles the Third or something like that. Third, yeah. Yeah, King Charles the Third has said that looking after the environment is a very good idea. I expect it to be King Urinal Septum of the um, <laughs> fifth lands of the of the Reich has decreed that all the dragons Reich? must be <laughs> exterminated. I don't know. I'm trying to make things I up mean, on the spot. Urinal Septum was the king of um, what well, was the you emperor were first of all? All the words together, weren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Into that title. King Urinal Septum. Urinal Septum was from Tamriel. <laughs> I think you'll find. Yes, he was, but anyway. I thought it was, it was a urinal, as in, like, bathroom. He may as well be. <laughs> I was honestly thinking of, like, right, kingly names that I know. Urinal Septum, that'll do. <laughs> uh... Close enough. <laughs> yeah. Um, talking of fantasy settings. Eh? See? We're, uh, we're talking about Avatar today. <laughs> Silence. Ah, oh, yes. I thought that was a decent segue. I didn't get it. Silence. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> like, I, like, yeah. I yeah. tried. Okay, you know what? Fine. We can carry Guys. on the banter. And if Grace can find a better segue into talking about Avatar The Last Airbender, we can do that. Otherwise, it's the episode's <laughs> going to be an hour of me talking about really tedious office drama. All right. Well, you see, everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. What? <laughs> no, it hasn't. But it did, because they just attacked. Segway into Avatar, you're welcome. Oh, sh I didn't know the f Which Avatar are we doing? Airbender. Well, we're well, also- Well, then I'm right! Don't boo me, I'm right! <laughs> <laughs> but the Fire Nation hasn't attacked. But they did. A hundred <laughs> years ago. And then the war kicked off. And then me and my brothers are- <laughs> Grace, you're not- you're not Katara. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. As much as you wish you were. 
Oh, I so badly wanted to be. When I was younger, in the bathtub, anything was possible. (laughs) I was like, I was... You do kind of have the hair, to be fair. What, brown hair? Yeah, well, it's it's so long and you can do the things with it if you wanted to. What, the loops? Yeah. Yeah, No, I I don't think that constitutes me being... You you should do the loops. Look, no, it'll good. it'll be fine. If I can think that I'm Gene Hunt for most of my teenage life, then you can think you are Katara if you want. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Let's go with that. Um, we were all cringy teenagers once, and some of us are still are. That's very true. Well, I watched Avatar when I was younger than a teenager, so I, I think I can I get a pass on pretending to be a waterbender in the bathtub. <laughs> Okay, shall we start with talking about the world of Avatar, or shall we talk about our experience with it first? Because, Grace, this is pretty much your topic at this point, so... Oh, okay. Oh, fuck me. I'm the topic master. You're bigger on Avatar than I am. Uh, I suppose. Nick, have you watched any? I do get the hype behind it. Okay. You know, like... Have you watched it? Yes, I have... (laughs) <laughs> very, very visually impressive, but the plot was garbage. You're talking about the blue cat people, aren't you? The, yes, I am. Is that not what uh, we're talking about? No. 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 Uh, oh, Av- okay. Avatar The Last Airbender. Ah. It's, it's the opposite, until it gets to book two. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense, and now we've made that joke, we don't have to do it again. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the other joke that we're going to be resisting making, I may as well clarify. In the UK, the term... Bender <laughs> refers oh, yeah. to a homosexual. It is very much sort of a 90s to 2000s early slang. Quite negative. It's quite a, slur, a fairly yes. negative one. If I called someone a bender, they'd probably be quite upset. Yeah. Yes. However, I feel like anyone who watched Avatar yes. lost, lost the implication of that word and now... I feel like the word bender has kind of gone out of circulation yeah. in that sense, and everyone just thinks you're talking about waterbenders, firebenders, well, it, benders. That's it true. Has. Once, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, once you've watched the show, that changes in your mind. Yes. Nick, I know, has not watched the show. Honestly, it's fine. Um, okay. It, it kind of loses its um, its sting, because I used to watch quite a lot of Futurama, and of course there's a character in oh, there called Bender, course, yeah. so you know. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. Well, that's fine. It's not about him either. <laughs> <laughs> Even though metal benders do show up later on. Oh, there, there we go. They're all robots. No, no. I am Bender. Please insert Gerda. There, there, <laughs> there is a ginormous robot right near the end, mm-hmm. but that's something else. I see. Exactly. Actually, no, no. Wait, there's lots of. There's actually quite a few robots. There are a few robots in the Legend. Of, we'll probably be talking about Legend of Korra as well. I don't think Nick will like Avatar mainly because. The trains are not trains. Ah, I think Nick will they... like Legend of Korra <laughs> because there are trains involved. Yes, there, there are, but like the old-fashioned trains in like the first one are just a couple of guys behind some earth blocks that are just sliding yeah. it along a monorail <laughs> <laughs> using earth bending. We should probably start with the very basics. So, bending is the it's using martial arts to manipulate the elements. Which is sick. Which is sick, to be clear. Uh, there are four nations, each with a different that master a different element. Like the Fire Nation are big on fire bending. The Earth Kingdom and hot the, food. And hot food. The Earth Benders <laughs> all do Earth bend. Sorry, Earth Kingdom all do Earth bending. Yeah. Uh, the Water Tribe they're involved with water. Oh, and the Swamp People who live in the Everglades. Yes. Oh. There's also the Swamp oh, People exception. who do kind of. They, they're waterbenders, aren't they? Yeah, they are waterbenders. Yeah. Swamp-style waterbenders. Cool. Mud, mud benders. Mm-hmm. And then oh, there's the air food. nomads, who uh, are nomadic and live in, the, live in the sky and in mountains. Or they did, before the Fire Nation attacked. Da, 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 da. Exactly. I'm guessing um, this is why there's only one airbender now. Bingo! <laughs> yeah. Because they committed genocide. <laughs> this is a kid's show. It's heavy stuff, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah, it was, it was quite refreshing when I was younger because it was like the one TV show that did, like, it was aimed at kids, but it didn't treat you like a fucking idiot. Mm-hmm. Like, so, like, in Fairly Odd Parents, which I loved, was it was like, I'm going to turn into a bat and use my supersonic, whatever the fuck, echolocation to, to 
to find Timmy who's turned invisible, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get that. I, I, look, you don't need to explain yourself. I understand what's going on. Shut up. But Avatar was like, it didn't really do that as ham. Yeah, there's more, more like adult themes in it. Mm -hmm. um, well, that as well. Yeah, seen, yeah, through, seen through the lens of uh, like this fantastical world where people can control elements with their mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Like it starts out in the middle of um, middle of the uh, more south. It's the South Pole. It is the South Pole. I thought so. The South Pole, where basically the Fire Nation has come in, absolutely wrecked the place, left them with no water benders, so they can't build anything. Really, they're just sort of stuck out there. Mm. Um, trying to keep life together and there's this one girl there who can still waterbend and that it's kept a secret so they don't abduct her and like she really wants to learn it and then they uncover this this young lad who got himself and his bison frozen in some ice and it's later revealed that he ran away from home because he didn't want to fight the fire nation I should really be pulling up some pictures from abilities yeah yeah, basically it's like the Dalai Lama thing. You're sort of reincarnated. Right, this, okay. This spiritual Yeah, leader. so the Avatar is the only person who can use all four elements. Yeah, conveniently. Yes, and he is like the bridge between yeah. the human world and the spirit world. And if the Avatar dies, he is reincarnated in the next one in the cycle. So if yes. the last airbender is killed, the next one will be part of the water tribe. Right, I see. Yeah. And the cycle air, goes water, air, water, earth, fire, earth, fire yeah. Um. Yeah, I think Nick. Any questions? <laughs> we kind of um, powered through that. I oh 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 the I uh, probably tell you why why what the fuck happened. So basically, his goal is to become a fully realized avatar. He can only control air, and he needs to go on like this mission to not only learn all the elements, but to stop this dictator in the Fire Nation from invading and killing everyone. Okay. So, yeah. That's, that's, I think that sums it up. So ev every nation within it is sort of based on somewhere in Asian culture. Yeah, right. Okay. Sort of the yeah. Fire Nation are sort of a mix of Imperial Japan. Japan and China. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and, that's what you think. Yeah. And then the Water Tribe is Inuit. Earth Kingdom is China. Mm -hmm. um, so I do remember sort of... Uh, Temple to Um My brother and me, we used to watch a lot of Cartoon Network and... My brother liked all the stuff with scrapping in it, and he used to watch, I think it was The Legend of Aang. I know it was about yeah. an old kid with an arrow on his head. That's it. That's the one. Ah, uh, okay. I see. Oh, man. <laughs> I, have, I have watched it then. Yeah, I have watched some of it. Okay. I suppose, like, if you didn't watch it religiously, you wouldn't know what was going on, because, like, unlike Johnny Bravo and shit, you could just drop in. Yeah. But Avatar was one of those things you had to watch in order to know what was going on. Yeah, it's got, yes. like, an overarching storyline. It's not you know, self-contained problem yeah, unless it's of the, the week thing. Yeah. yeah. Unless it's like um, like the <laughs> the Great Divide, which is like the episode no one fucking wants to talk about because it's I, dog shit. I have to confess, I dropped out after the Great Divide. So, I watched Avatar when I was a... I was at uni. Because okay. my, then, my then partner was like, you should watch Avatar, it's really good. And I did not see the appeal. Like, season one... Is it's not a great opener coming in as an adult, I have to say. Okay. Season two made me regret saying that. Season two was top notch, made me change my mind, went back, watched the first one in a different light, thoroughly enjoyed it. Oh good. So I recommend giving Avatar a proper a proper chance, mm. possibly starting with season two. No, just go season one, just go through it. I feel like you are clouded by nostalgia when you say that. I am, but at the same time, it puts all the groundwork down about the universe, and mm -hmm. you can appreciate the power crawl a lot better. Yeah, that's fair. It's definitely worth watching. I just don't know if it grabs you in as well. I, I think there's lots of things that it's worth watching, even though it's boring. That's fair. The first season of. Yeah. So, you know, it's personal, personal choice. That's fair. So I'll do a quick rundown of some pivotal, pivotal characters that we'll see. Just so Nick has just a vague idea of what we're talking about. Yeah, go for it. Yes. So, posting pictures in the... Full disclosure, all these kids are underage. We're not sexualizing anyone from Legend of Aang. No. So this is not going in the Smash or Pass channel. 
Thank God. <laughs> I was like, just picture of a twelve-year-old. What are you saying? I'm like, no. <laughs> so this is Ang. You know, you know of him, bald kid. Okay, yeah, yeah. I know who. I know roughly who Ang is. I remember yeah. him being immensely irritating for some reason. He was very happy and kooky when he was younger. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In the first season. Gets more mature over time. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah everyone's got some really good, like, good character development that happens gradually yes, which is like sure. so good i was like oh, you don't see that often <laughs> you know mm-hmm. uh, this is katara she is the water bending lady that grace wanted to be when she was a kid okay i didn't want to be her i thought she was weak i wanted <laughs> to be a water bender <laughs> <sighs> You wanted to be the that witch, the bloodbending lady. I wanted lady. to be Hammer, yeah. bro. I wanted to bloodbend yeah. people. Because I had, oh, by season one as a child, I had already worked out that the body is made up of a lot of water. And I thought <laughs> I, could, can, I could make people do some weird shit. So <laughs> in addition to the basic elements, there are advanced versions of bending within those. Okay. So water bending, one of its advanced schools is bloodbending, which is like manipulating someone's body. I'm yeah, or just taking water out of plants and shit. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm guessing that's frowned upon. Oh, and healing. Yes. Healing. Yeah, water bending's got she's... variety. Okay. Yeah, she's got. She's the healer of the party, sadly. Uh, I also, I personally preferred the earthbenders because they could do a lava bending and metal bending. Okay. Yeah, that mm-hmm. makes sense. Right. Somehow, the coolest character in the entire series of Legend of Aang. This is Sokka. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. He has no bending skills at all. He just has a boomerang and later on a sword. And you know what? He holds his own the entire way. He ends up yeah. being like the tactician of the party. And Yeah. Yeah. And literally all he's got is like bludgeoning skills. Yeah. I mean, he he is the brains of the entire outfit realistically Not because only like that, he starts But canonically oh. the only one who fucks. Really? Uh, if you say so. Suki, uh, possibly the moon? No, he I don't think the any moon. I'm not even. Happens. I'm not going to elaborate on that. <laughs> <laughs> he fucks the moon. So, okay, actually, no. One brief tangent. I know we're not even into... There's a brief scene in Avatar. That it's become a bit of a meme. I'll just find it for you now to watch. It is the greatest depiction of... Uh, male interaction in an animated series. This is the most realistic conversation I've ever seen. Okay. Let's go into our Facebook group just so you can see it and grab it quickly. It's going to have the emotional range of a teaspoon, isn't it? Uh, no, I think this is good. Right, let's have a look. I'm just going to watch it on my phone. Yeah. Is this the hot air balloon yeah. one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Like, this is, this is exactly how men interact <laughs> with when women aren't there. It kind of is. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, yeah, that's rough, buddy. <laughs> this, this is I the... he doesn't even question it. He's just like, yeah, yeah all right. <laughs> it's rough, bro. This, yeah. You know. this, this is the thing. Like, if um, <laughs> if I have a conversation with somebody, I'll go, I'll go home to Sophie and she'll be like, oh, so what did they say? So I'll say, like, I'll reference the sal- salient points and then Sophie will be like, all right, what, what did you say about that? And I'm like, I, I don't know. I didn't retain it. Yeah, yeah, we just sort of carried on the conversation. Yeah, that's it. It's that's like how it works. Yeah, she might have said something else. She might not. I have. I honestly have no idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I am useless when it comes to gossip. Apparently, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> the other guy in that scene is none other than Prince Zuko. Okay. Spoilers. The son of the villain. Son, son of the villain. Briefly, the villain himself. Spoilers for Avatar: The Last Airbender. His his mission is to capture the Avatar and restore his honor. He eventually joins the team and is teaches Aang how to firebend. The they're doing the whole sort of anime trope where the villain is the villain and then when they're defeated they join your team. Kind of. Yeah. A little bit, but like with more time for the guy to process. Like he joins right at the end. Like he's had years of like emotional abuse from his family and he's mm-hmm. just he's sort of like slowly getting out of that oh that's nice yeah that's nice yeah the one member of his family that didn't abuse him is this fella here uncle iroh oh my god i i felt i like i felt like i was getting therapy from uncle iroh's a lovely dude not realizing he's so nice (laughs) he likes tea 
he gives you sort of moral talks. He was never a villain. He's just sort of, well, he was in the flashbacks, but he was never an actual villain. Yeah. Yeah, he's always sort of very carefully placed next to Zuko, so you don't like. You, it's easier to forgive Zuko because he's always with him trying to get him on the right path. So you think, oh, well, the lovely guy isn't giving up on Zuko, so maybe we shouldn't either. Mm-hmm. You know? Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. It's all very carefully crafted. Here's another picture of him from season three. <laughs> he is rich. <laughs> he gets hench. He is, brief- he is captured for a while, and he just spends an entire season lifting. <laughs> and then in the final episode, he's... He's sort of in the prison. Breaks himself out of prison. Yeah, but before he does that, the one guard who's kind to him, he just goes, "You shouldn't be here tomorrow. Call in sick." And then, yeah. <laughs> then he's he's been lifting so long, he just rips the bars open and just decks the prison, <laughs> and it's great. Yeah, no fire bending involved. He just yeah breaks it. Oh with yeah, his bare it was hands. was it on the day where there's where there's no fire bending? Yeah, there's no fire bending. Oh, I've, I'm remembering wrong. I thought it was on his big power day. Uh, no, yeah, no, no. he, he wastes the day when the none of the guards have their kung fu magic, and then he just punches all of them. Because <laughs> <laughs> they weren't ready for him just to rip the bars open. <laughs> 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 yeah, Iroh, absolute chad. I, I do like that's oh, how yeah. he escapes. It's not mm-hmm. magic or anything like that. He just breaks the bars. He's been practicing. He lifted. Yeah, yeah, punches his way through the prison. Mm-hmm. I mean, I suppose there's not much else to do in prison. I would have thought, than yeah. lift. Get hench. Talking of absolute chads, there is one final member of the core team that I should probably mention. Okay. And that is Toph Bei Fong. This is the earthbending master that teaches him earthbending. Okay. She is ten years old. She is blind. I think she's... She sees by echolocation. She's canonically one of the strongest <laughs> characters in the series. Hey, nice. She's the only person I'm aware of to have defeated two avatars. Wow, right, okay. And, yeah, she's overall fantastic. Yeah, she got trained by Moles. Yeah, Moles taught her to see. Moles taught her to... <laughs> to echolocate <laughs> as well. Because, uh... Because, like, they have, like, original masters, so all these humans, they learnt bending from these animals. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. and so, like, Firebenders learnt it from dragons, Earthbenders learnt it from Moles, uh, Waterbenders learnt it from the, the koi carp. Yes. Uh, ocean and moon, and which are very very displaced. I don't know how they managed that. And then airbenders learned it from bison. Mm-hmm. Oh, fantastic! Flying bison. Flying oh, yeah, bison. we should show. Ang- yeah. Sorry, we should. Flying bison. I'm getting showing the sweet ride. I'm getting my bald people confused. I just called Nick Ang. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let me find <laughs> a picture of Ap- Appa. <laughs> I'm not an airbender. I'm a rust bender. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> this is. The muscle of the party, I think that's fair to say. Okay. He, he does carry the weight. Yeah, in more ways than one. Oh, I've... And he's a cutie. I've seen this guy before. I've seen Apple yeah. before. There's been a few times in the first season where they he just breaks into a room and just fucks him up like Mr. T. <laughs> yeah. And it's quite something. Yeah. Um, flying six-legged bison. Lots of wool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, Go the fun. only time Aang has been close to murdering someone is when he found out that uh, Appa had been... They stole him. Yeah, they fucking muzzled him, and he was like, you did what? Fair enough. I should mention there's also something called the Avatar State, which okay. is, his eyes go all glowy, and he gets the power of all his past lives at once. Right, okay, so it's basically like that bit in Yu-Gi-Oh! where he gets big. Imagine that, but with a thousand <laughs> past lives. Right, I see. All channeling their yeah. power into... Wanting to kick someone's ass. <laughs> yeah, it's triggered by like a very emotional state. Like if you feel threatened, you'll go. All the past lives will team up mm-hmm. with you against whoever the fuck is trying to fuck mm. with you. <laughs> yes. It's like it's the ultimate. We have your back, bro. But like, if you die, um, while in the avatar state, everyone dies. Right, I see. They lose the souls forever. And you won't. You won't get reborn. Yeah. On that note, yeah. let's talk briefly about the sequel. Briefly? Fuck me, we've barely gone into the first Oh god, we have, right. yeah. I'll, I'll do it super fast. I'll be honest, I prefer Legend of Korra, the sequel, because it's got loads of world building, it's all steampunk and fun, and uh, it's got the cooler villains. Okay. So, 
No, I wholly disagree. The first one's better, and you can't change my mind. That's fair. We can agree to disagree. So Korra set seventy years later. Aang's dead. Seventy. Seventy. Yeah. Is yeah. it? I thought it was like forty. Yeah, seventy or something. years later. Okay. Aang is dead because that happens. Some okay. of his team are still around. They're sort of old and wise now, and he's been re reincarnated as Korra, and now she has to learn all of bending and things. He's gone back to the beginning with a, a new person. Exactly. Yeah. This is you know how a lot of shows have terrible love triangles where there's a girl having to be forced between two very boring men. Yes, Wednesday is one. Wednesday is one. Cora <laughs> is another. There's the two guys there, Mako and Bolin. They're two brothers. One's a firebender, one's an earthbender. Yeah. Bolin recovers from being rejected so well, and I absolutely admire his writing as a character. <laughs> Because they do the whole love triangle. She chooses Zook, not Zook. She chooses Mako, who's very boring. Yeah. Bolin's like the fun one, and uh, yeah, she turns him down. And instead of going on a oh, why do why do they only like bad boys and not good men like me? He just sort of gets up and he's like, "Yep, cool, I'm off." And then he goes and eats tons. He eats tons. Gets upset. He goes on a journey of self discovery. Becomes a movie star. <laughs> <laughs> and then ends up dating um, one of Toph's grandkids. So liking Korra was oh, like just holding him back, effectively. Yeah, genuinely. He, he has a great time with it, and he becomes an absolute chad. And I respect <laughs> that. Good on you, Bolin, for just getting over it and recovering. That is one of the only... Meanwhile, Mako's life goes absolutely bad. Meanwhile, Mako, they, the, the writers just didn't know what to do with him. He's kind of boring. Um, Korra ends up dating... Mako's ex-girlfriend, Asami. Okay. And that becomes one of the first animated girl-on-girl um, -girl romances that's canon. Oh. oh, right, okay. And I think it's quite pivotal pivotal in history. Yeah. So I thought it was worth mentioning. Korasami walks yeah, so really, all the others could run. You couldn't tell. It was so fucking... They hidden. held hands at the end and everyone was like, yes, oh, it's canon. <laughs> that was a big deal at that time. <laughs> No, it wasn't, because that time wasn't that It was 2014, I want to say. So, yeah, we are getting on for ten years now. No. Nine yeah. Years. yeah. It walked yeah. so all these new ones could run. And props to him for okay. that. Uh, the writing in the first one was better. Yeah, okay, I'll give it that. But the villains were better in the sequel. Well, you had four of them, and one of them was shit. One of them was shit, I'll give you that. However, I think it's fair to say we're all here to simp for Kuvira. Are we? Yes, we are. No. <laughs> are we not? <laughs> I. F James likes her because they try to do like this this Hitler parody. That's not why I like her. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> so she's just rolling up in her like Hugo Boss Earth Kingdom military gear, wanting to like purify the Earth. Kingdom. I like her because she's hot. And, okay. And James is just simping, and it's just like. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> I, I'm just pulling up pictures to justify this. You're, you're not... Okay. Um, disclaimer. As far as I know, uh, James hasn't shown any indication of wanting to be a fascist. Thank you. Um, so... That's the nicest thing you've ever said about me. <laughs> he's, just, he's just simping for one. He's just simping for one, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, a while back we asked ourselves... What villain are you okay with because they're hot? Because this is a common trend in fanfiction. And I think for me, Kuvira is the core one in that. Mm, I see. And you know what? I I think I have a high ground here, because I know for Grace it was Zuko. Well, he was a nice boy. He didn't start that way. Yeah, well, he had to earn his hotness by getting rid of the pony <laughs> and going on the journey. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you that. That's fair. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> cool. Oh, right. wow. Any predictions before we <laughs> jump in? I think I've talked about everyone I want to talk about. Uh, I, I can't. We could go into loads of characters because there's loads there are of, a characters lot of well characters in this. Characters. But, um, but um, yeah, I think we've got yeah. the core. I did, of course, forget to mention Suki I mean, <laughs> as well. And Azula. Oh, and Azula. And yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> which is probably the biggest villain is yes. Azula. Like, the Fire Lord, we didn't give a shit about, but when Azula was on, we were like, da 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 da. Like, <laughs> so Azula oh, no. <laughs> is Zuko's sister. 14 years 14, old, yeah. hyper competent, firebending prodigy, and absurdly evil. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Like really evil. I do. I look like a saint compared to her moral <laughs> compass. You sure do. <laughs> I didn't think you had a moral compass, Grace. Yeah. You just uh, did my, what suited you. My all right. My moral roulette wheel is black and red. Hers is just black or red, whichever one, whichever's the bad one. I see. <laughs> so you're saying you have less of a moral compass, more of a moral roulette wheel, but. Yes. <laughs> People put bets on whatever kind of chaos you do. That's it, yeah. Red, yes. the blood of angry men. Black. <laughs> Fuck's sake. The dark of ages. You let mi- <laughs> Don't let <lay> Miz us out, <laughs> out of nowhere. <laughs> right. I think we've talked about all the prominent characters. Uh, any predictions? Uh, my predictions is everyone who grew up with the show is going to have the hots for Zuko, so I think Zuko is going to I think do a lot of well. people are going to have formative Zuko crushes. Yes. Also, back in the day, when Fanfiction Net was about, everyone had their money on Zuko and Katara getting together because they were of a similar age and they thought like the tropes were going to go that way. Um, and then when it, that didn't happen, everyone was making fix it fix. <laughs> I see. I do love the um, most fandom's capacity to do that. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> the author's got a specific vision, and the entire fandom just like no. <laughs> Let's do it our way. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty much how it always goes. Yeah. Um, I, I suspect a lot of Kurosami will come up if we look into Kura, because that was sort of willed into existence by the fandom. I guess mm. the writers wanted redemption for not going Zutara. Here's what's funny, is that back in... I guess when it first came out, a lot of my generation were like, yeah, Katara and Zuko, yeah, yeah, yeah. And re-watching it as an adult, and then the new generation who has watched it, everyone seems to be going for, like, Zuko and Sokka. Ah. <laughs> they've just replaced Katara with her brother, because they're like, actually, no, this, this could work better. a lot He's better. He's got an edgy side bit. Up. We can make this work. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> yeah uh, I can believe that. God's sake. I... Yeah, I predict lots of Kurosami in my future, because I ship them, for one thing. That's what I'm going to look for. I would be disappointed if I didn't see at least one crossover with the Blue Cat people. We will probably look for that, yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, there is someone I'm going to look for specifically. It's someone. It's a minor character, but they're in the lore quite prominently, and they are a fandom favourite. Two avatars before Aang. There is a lady named Avatar Kiyoshi. Oh man, I thought you were going to go for the cabbage merchant. <laughs> oh yeah, we'll look for some cabbage man. Uh, but I'm Avatar, so Ki- off. <laughs> Avatar Kiyoshi was like seven foot tall. She lived for two hundred ish years because the authors got their date timeline wrong, and they just went with it. <laughs> Fair uh, enough. Too good to die. The fandom have a very unique depiction of her that is slightly different from the show because it's sort of been exaggerated over time okay she's aggressively pro murder <laughs> that's the fan favorite bit. that's that's the fan depi- in the in the show her actual depiction is you shouldn't kill people but you have to do what you must and over time the fandom has twisted that into i'm gonna fucking cut his balls off <laughs> <laughs> and yeah i'm looking forward to finding some avatar kiyoshi fix yeah, okay, fair enough. Shares a voice actress with Femshep as well, so this ties in neatly with our Mass Effect episodes. Yeah. Oh yes, talk about the poster. Oh yeah, um, loads of new stuff's coming out with Avatar as well. There's, and one of those things came, the picture came out yesterday, there's a teen, it's a follow-up of Aang as his teenage days. Hang on, let me pull up. More. I think he's an adult, isn't he? He's in his 20s, yeah? Maybe. Maybe 18, youngest? I, I didn't look too much into the numbers, to be honest. I kind of want to go in blind. Yeah, to be fair. Uh, I'll just... Not the live action, either. Yeah, this isn't live, live action. action. Oh, I just sent that to Grace again. I meant to... Put that in the... <laughs> <laughs> so I, I know, James, I know! <laughs> I 
I do quite like Zuko's look in the background. Is she the one on the right? No, Zuko's the left. one on the left, drop kicking fire. Oh yeah, okay. The one on the right is Toph Bay Fong. Yeah. Oh, I mean, or soccer. Yeah. Far Rice is Toph, flying in on a giant boulder. Uh, she's doing the come at me, bro. That is her personality. <laughs> I see. Everyone's doing their best. Soccer just has a boomerang that has sort of... It's become a long sword at this point. That's not... That's his club, you dick. That's his he's club. He's sharpened it. It's got bigger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, he's got his boomerang on him, yeah. Oh, yeah, I see the boomerang. Uh, yeah, it looks rad. I don't really have much else to say, to be honest. Uh, Grace, was there anything you wanted to add? Uh, no, I don't think there was. I don't know, just saying that, like, it's coming. They've got their it's own coming. shit together. There's a... There's an Avatar Kyoshi project going on as well. Uh, I think there's some other things. They're, they're planning an ACU, if you will. Okay, yeah. so there'll be a lot more Avatar content in the future. Sure yes. sounds it. Yes. And it'll probably be Can't better wait. than the Blue Cat people. Uh, it already probably, is, yeah. let's be real. It already is. Mm -hmm. Right, I think we've rambled enough. Shall we get into it? Yes, but I need the toilet, so I'll see you in a bit. Oh, for God's sake. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you do it's that. It's all the Monster Energy drinks from the brink... <laughs> Blink of orgasm I had to drink. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm actually just going to start with typing in Avatar Kyoshi. <laughs> <laughs> just to see what's up with her. Because she is my favourite Avatar. Have you read any of the comics? I've not. I really should. I read the fan comic. Oh, no. Read the, the read the actual comic. She's uh, part of a travelling gang. And she's got a, a cute fire-bending GF. Ooh. Called Ragni. I think. Sign me up. Or Rangi? Oh, Raggy? No, not Raggy. <laughs> I'm, that's exactly what I was Raggy, thinking. I was like, really? oh no. The Raggy. piss is about to be taken and you, you didn't disappoint. <laughs> Any excuse to do an impression of Scooby Doo. Oh. So I typed in Avatar Kyoshi. I'm still getting soccer with Zuko, incidentally. <laughs> Well, that's the point. What is the um? What are the stats, bro? What? Oh yeah, I can pull up some stats. Legend of Korra has sixteen thousand fix. Mhm. Mm Last Airbender has thirty-six thousand, which is about right because it's got about ten years on it. Mhm. Mm uh, popular characters. Zuko of the thirty-six thousand, Zuko is in twenty-five thousand of them. <laughs> Relationships. Katara Zuko six thousand six hundred. Sokka Zuko. 5,800. Aang Katara, which is canon, 4,000. Oh, right. There's your top three. I'll check for Korra as well. God, Zuko's doing well, isn't he? <laughs> he sure is. So, top three pairings in relation to Korra. Korasami is at 6,800. Mm -hmm. Followed closely by Lin Bei Fong and Kaya with 1,300. So there's a five... There's a 5,000 gap between the first and the second most popular. Hmm. Kaya is um, Tenzin's wife? No. Kaya is Tara and Aang's daughter. Oh, I see. Interesting. Okay. Well, you know, I think she's a... a blah, 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 lesbian. Fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, you forgot, forgot about the lesbians? Word? Did you forget the word for lesbian? I did. <laughs> I honestly did. It just went. It was like, it was there, and then it wasn't. I was like, oh. Just there, like, oh, oh what, what are they called? What a time. Uh, women who like other women. Uh, I know, yeah, I know. <laughs> like, such a part of my vocabulary just went down. I was like, oh, Christ. They're going to laugh at me. So, Nick. I don't. Who would you say? I don't what? like where this is going. Okay. Uh, who would you say? I haven't even asked the question yet. <laughs> <laughs> who would you say is your favourite Kung Fu master? Oh, um, probably probably one of the well-known ones, you know, Bruce Lee, Jackie Chan. Bruce Lee, Martial Jackie arts. Chan, I'm opening Jack it, yeah. Black. Jack, well, yeah, Kung Fu Panda, that was yep. a film, yeah. Yeah, it was. That was a film, that was a thing. I have here a crossover. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at this. Kung Fu in the Four Nations. This is Kung Fu in the Four Nations by Media King. This is set... Immediately after, well, during to after Kung Fu Panda 2, uh, in the cannon factory, uh, when Shen's about to blast Po, the cannon doesn't work as intended, and it blasts them into another universe entirely. Oh my god. Uh, 
So, uh, Poe, the Kung Fu Panda, Jack Black, makes it into the Avatar universe. (laughs) 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 Okay. And it brings Shen with him. This, he, he brings the entire Furious 5 with him, by the looks of things. Oh. Yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah, I'm just having a look. Meanwhile, in another completely different universe, a human boy with a blue tattoo on his head was walking in a cave. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic entrance. <laughs> What's this and who's it by? Uh, Media King. Wait. Oh, this happens during uh, Ko the Face Stealer. Oh, what? <laughs> So there's an absolute body horror episode about a spirit called Ko, the face stealer. He is a centipede with a human face. Nice. And, yeah. For Ko to not steal your face, you had to show no emotions at all, or he would steal your face. How do you show no emotion? That's quite easy. Just deadpan. Yeah, no, but like, if you're showing no emotion, then you're showing indifference, which is an emotion. Not really. it, It doesn't work like that. Like, you just got to stay default. You'd you'd have to, you know. But, but that's showing a difference. It's not. It's mm-hmm. not working. Yeah, but your expression of indifference isn't really anything. It's how you act that makes you indifferent. But your face is still showing an emotion because okay, okay, is if, an emotion. it's all right. It's the expression. He's looking for an expression. If you look angry and your eyebrows are drawn, he's like, oh shit, oh, I've got an angry face. If you're if you're sad and you're droopy and you're crying, ugly crying, he's like, oh shit, oh, I've got an ugly crier, and he'll nick your face. If you smile a little bit, he goes, oh, I've got a smirker, I'll go and nick that one. You know what I mean? Oh, so he's, just he's, like... he's building a collection. Yeah, yeah. He, he, yeah. he likes interesting, he likes expressions, I guess. I, s- than... I see. So, yeah, he's yeah. basically the, the guy wearing the anorak at the end of the platform. <laughs> how yeah. do you how, do this, how? Nick? <laughs> You've got, like, a supernatural skill of bringing everything back to trains. Yep. I don't get I, it. Thing is, though, he's right. Because <laughs> yeah. Ko is that, is that dweeby kid who moved out of his parents' house only to live in someone else's basement. And, like, his mum is the mother of faces and he sort of resents her for it, like a sort of incel sort of situation. Mm. It's like weird god spirit shit. And it's like, yeah. <laughs> and, like, they don't elaborate further on it. <laughs> so here's the thing, Jim. I've got no special skill. I just call them as I see them. <laughs> so you know, where so, it, it was always trains. Yes, always has been. Fuck's sake! Right, I'm just skimming through this. Incidentally, um, Shen teams up with Admiral Z- Admiral Zhao, the villain from uh, first season. Mm. Yeah. And yeah, Poe and the gang just team up with Ang and the gang. And skimming through, it looks like Poe learns to bend at some point. Oh, what does he learn to bend? I'm not sure. I'm just skimming through. He turns his claws golden at one point. Oh, he's, he's going to be Which like makes a... me think he enters the Avatar state. <laughs> he's going to be like a food bender or something like that, isn't he? Yeah, I was going to say noodles. Oh. Mm, That'd be no- good. Noodle bender, yeah. I'd like it if he just happens to be the Avatar of their universe, and now he's shown up, he can, like, enter the state. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. I mean, yes, at the end of the good. Kung Fu Panda movie, he does go back and he like learns to manipulate the the cannon with Tai Chi. <laughs> he does, yeah. So he's Which is kind water- of like metal bending. No, he's water water bending. Water bending's Tai Chi. Oh, um, sorry. I was thinking about the cannon. It's about board. shifting your opponent's weight and using it against them. Mm. Uh, my money's on bending. him becoming a water bender in this fic. That'd be good. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> if if my kung fu panda lore is anything to stand on, <laughs> I'm sorry, Grace. <laughs> I didn't realise you were the kung fu panda lore expert. Well, I guess it's... we've got to do an episode now, haven't we? Uh... We might do. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, it is shit up. In a similar vein, I've got some monster fucking for you, Grace. <laughs> Don't do this to me. Say, like, why me? It doesn't have to be me every time. This, this like, one is you is it? because it's Ko the Face Stealer with an original character. It's just because I like centipedes. And not in yeah. that way. I just My favourite Pokemon is a centipede. And that's it. Mm-hmm. And that is it. You can't link me like this. Oh, I'm putting them in the wrong place. Hold on. There's the right place. Professionalism. Yeah, it should be in fi- fix for episode one. Ah, uh, I see. If you would like to see these fix being posted yeah, in real time. Yeah, join our Discord. Then pay us money and join our Discord. 
Yeah. <laughs> and you can see me post them in the wrong place in real time. Yes. So this is Love is, a, is Such a Monstrous Thing by Loneliness. All's Fair in... Loneliness is Such a Monstrous Thing by All's Fair in Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> so this notes something I didn't realize. Uh, the voice actor for Ko is also Avaros from The Dragon Prince. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> who has a very sexy voice. Who is also someone in Fallout who does a radio show. No. Yeah. Oh, okay, pretty, hold on, we're derailing I'm pretty this. Sure it, hold on. I'm pretty sure you were the one who told me as well. Or, like, we looked it up on the same day. Hold on. Grace, could you do me a favour? Could you find Nick a clip of Avaros, just so he knows what? why I'm going, no way? Uh, yeah, alright, hang on. Oh. I love the tanks in this. I lost a bet, okay. Graphic description, uh, graphic depictions of illness. I, I feel like I've... I've written, I've spelt his name wrong because I'm getting too a strong start. proponent of Aristotelism instead of um, <laughs> who I'm looking for. Double A R A V O S. Bro, Actually, why don't you look it up? Before like... <laughs> we find, yeah, Nick, I just want to show you this character. Okay. And uh, first, I want you to do the smash or pass on this character. Okay, so we're in the smash or pass Discord. Sure. Thing. Apologies, people who are here for Avatar. I'm sure it'll be relevant eventually. Okay. What are your Where thoughts? Have you sent... Where have you sent this? Smash or pass? <laughs> so, um, I'm kind of imagining his voice to be how little Karibo used to voice Pegasus from Yu-Gi-Oh. Okay. That is so niche, and I have no idea what you're on about. Oh, fuck off. Fuck off. Don't want ads for Star Rail. <laughs> Star Rail? <laughs> Honkai Star Rail. It's by the Genshin. Oh, We're not doing an ad for these people. <laughs> there you go. So that's the Av that's Avaros and his voice. Okay, let's listen to Avaros and his voice. First of all, Avaros is a he, which was the biggest fucking shock to me. Because <laughs> I was like, oh, what a pretty elf lady. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, what a pretty elf man. <laughs> With a handsome voice. Elf hang, on, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Is it Garrus? That's three dog. Is it three? No way. That's three yeah. dog, really. Yeah. Like <laughs> the dude's got range. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the voice hasn't changed. <laughs> no, that that voice has changed from three dog for sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Sorry. That voice absolutely has changed from three dog. It hasn't changed from Co the Face Stealer. <laughs> but more importantly, Nick, smash or pass? Uh, it's gonna have to be smash. Mm hmm. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> and agreed. Yeah, the, the voice gave me the ASMR response. I, I it know, was right? Uncanny. What was going on? It's a bit eerie. Yeah, it is a bit eerie. That, I, like, you were expect. It. We all look at Avros and you expect this sort of. Oh, I'm an elven prince. Yeah. Or, oh, I'm an elven woman, which is what I thought at first. <laughs> And, and then, then he's he call me daddy. Then and he's like, like, "Hello, <laughs> ladies." <laughs> You're like, "Oh shit!" That was anyway. Yeah, that was something else. He also voices a monster in Avatar called I, Ko the Face Stealer. I yeah, cannot back, believe that that's back on dog. point. <laughs> yeah, and this is a fic about him dating someone who is autistic and thus doesn't have many facial expressions. Cool. <laughs> Grace. Yes. Um. Have we maybe found your AO3 uh, handle? <laughs> Shut up. Are you all's fair in Pride and Prejudice? No, I'm not. Because unlike this author, I can't write. <laughs> well, not with that attitude. If you, if you find something like this where it's poorly written <laughs> and like it's got doodles of cats on it, <laughs> Instead of words, <laughs> you've probably found me. But until that day... <laughs> oh, Grace, can we tell the story about you adding the cat drawings? What, me, when I started making my own language? In yes, English, the time you longer, invented your own language. I wanted hieroglyphics to come back. And so instead of words and letters, I started putting pictures back in. You're welcome. That's the story. <laughs> It was you who came up with those, like, pushed emojis that were all the rage a few 
a few no, years No, think ago. of it like this way, Nick. Say, say I'm writing <laughs> a sen. Say Grace aged... Up. How old were you, Grace? I'm not 10. Okay. <laughs> say Grace, age 15, is writing a story, Shut and up. it's like, oh, the cat walked down the stairs. Would it just Instead be of writing of... cat, she would write... She'd say cat, and then brackets, and then she'd draw the cat, and then carry on. Oh, I, I yeah, see. Yeah, but then later... But then later, throughout, if I used the word cat again, the word cat wouldn't be there. It would just be the picture of the cat. Yeah. Because basically, the first few sentences, before new word, the first word you see is the key. <laughs> yeah. And then the rest is, becomes more and more coded as you go down. Yeah, you do it the first time just so everyone knows what you're on about when you draw the cat. And then you, exactly. you just carry exactly. on. So, um, Grace... <laughs> <laughs> Lover of Centiscorch I... and Prince Sidon and inventor of the emoji. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, no, I'm just a pioneer trapped in my time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm confined by lack of Grace, would you be happy participation if I... from my fellow man. Would it help what? you if I gave you a fic about something you do unironically like that isn't involving centipedes? I feel like you're going to use this to bully me, but go <laughs> ahead. No, genuinely not. What is it? It's a crossover with uh, Heaven's Official Blessing. Oh, fucking hell, send that shit my way. <laughs> I've sent that shit your way. Hey. The Calamities of the Nations. Uh, oh, by... This is Calamities of the Nations by Kawaii995. Uh, yeah, it's it's Avatar, but if Avatar was done in the style of cultivating. Hey. Which I think works. Hmm. Zuko and an original male character. Mm-hmm. It's always Zuko. He, he gets around this Zuko yeah. in fan fiction. He, he does what? Oh, he's got daddy issues, has he? Fucking, I'm just of reading the he's... tags now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's got all the issues. Oh, no. Oh, my God. I'd be shocked if he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it would be a very different fic if he didn't, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. He'd be a very different character altogether, wouldn't he? Exactly. He's the king of daddy issues. Ah. It looks interesting, though. They've sort of branched out into uh, the sub-element stuff. Ooh. Yeah, I found all, I always found that stuff kind of interesting. Cause, so my head canon, and I could be wrong about this in the Avatar universe, because I'm not I'm not a Turbo fan. This is just my theory. Mm. I reckon there were probably a lot more airbending sub styles that were probably lost during the incident. Ah. Like maybe they could do lightning bending and cloud bending and things like that. I like but, how it's called the incident. Uh, sorry, the genocide. <laughs> if we wanted to get technical, it's fine. Uh, it's fine. Um, me and other enthusiasts often refer to the fall of MG Rover in 2005 as the unpleasantness. Sake. So, Nick, I know what's going on. Every time. It isn't every time. It it pretty much is. He gives you five minutes to recover, and then he goes again. I think that's generous. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate you giving yourself a cool down, Nick. No, the cooldown's for you. The cool yeah, I, okay, cool I appreciate you giving you. me a cooldown before you bring us back to trains again. Well, that or was cars, cars in that case. But, yeah, yeah, they're the same thing. The really not, <gasps> but okay. <laughs> I'm cutting off any reply <laughs> in the edit. It's it's just like you um, put the SpongeBob thing several hours later. Now back on topic. <laughs> it's it's just like all those episodes of Star Trek are the same thing. I mean, there are a couple that reuse similar ideas. For example, um, the one they used oh, for the film no, uh, with the no, Vija no, probe no. was actually based on the episodes with Nomad called The Changeling. I think that was He's called. doing this on purpose, yep. isn't yep. he? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's so catty, isn't he? So, so catty. Uh, I've got Zuko performing the Phantom of the Opera here as well. <laughs> okay, yeah, we can, we can have a look nice. at that. That sounds quite fun. <laughs> At least I think that's what this is about. Before me and you have an argument. Um... Before we go outside and solve this like men. Yes. <laughs> this is The World Forgot, But I Never Can by Anna Was Here. It's a crossover with Avatar The Last Airbender and The Phantom of the Opera. There we go, yeah. Oh, wow. Windville High School is putting on Phantom of the Opera. And while Zuko has his heart set on playing Phantom, he doesn't yet realise what a whirlwind this musical will turn out to be. <laughs> I, like how, I like how it... I'm sorry, objection... Zuko uses the word babe in the third paragraph. He does. The third sentence, what? in fact. That, that doesn't feel like a word Zuko would use. 
I swear he's actually said it in the thing. Oh, maybe. Though this is a high school a AU. Awkward teenager. They also use the word sus. I well. was going to say, uh, Sokka has also used the word sus shortly yeah. further down, which he probably would have done if Avatar was remade. Hmm. Oh, God. Yeah, Av timeline. Avatar's getting remade. Yeah. I'm what, if, been made. what if Zuko says sus in one of the new ones? Then we know that we found one of the scriptwriter's AO3 accounts. Yeah. <laughs> I want Sokka to say Riz. <laughs> I feel like Sokka... Sokka has Riz as well. He has Riz. I don't know mm -hmm. what Riz is. It just means swag. It's just swag. It's like style and like it, charm. It's rebranded swag. You know. So, um... It is Just for our, our younger listeners out there, um... <laughs> I just... Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Younger listeners, <laughs> do you know what swag is? If so, write in <laughs> to the big forecast at gmail.com. I would, I would just like to, I'd just like to observe. If you're ever wondering, uh, sort of how things get in the future, this is what it's like. Like once you reach thirty, the modern world becomes even more alien, bewildering to you. I mean, that's oh. not a bad thing, but. Yeah, it, it's just something that happens. To the younger listeners, swag is the culmination of drip and riz, where basically <laughs> swag is like also meant how you look. You were it were G, it, everything was fire. It was great, right? It's how you looked. Okay. I really on. do like how we've got Grace as an etymology expert. It's thank fantastic. you, Grace. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Thanks a lot. You know how to speak to the youth. Uh, I have to work with trainees. Mm -hmm. like, they're full of all sorts of interesting... This uh, is why Grace has the drip. Languages. <laughs> uh -huh. She knows all those fresh words. I don't, I don't use that. That are hip and with it. Yep. Oh, shut the <laughs> fuck up. <laughs> the dead, dead wicked in it. Hang on. Uh, YOLO. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, that hasn't been used in years. Good. Oh, blue lips, mate. Fucking no. What? <laughs> Means you're dead. Blue lips, dead. Oh, what? Yeah. <laughs> Don't threaten it's me new. for using the word YOLO. <laughs> it's <new. laughs> it's kind of harsh. <laughs> that's not... You know that's not what I meant. What did you mean? He's bit. He's being aggressively old now. Like, no. Um, Blue lips means dead, which means... Or, like, it's going badly... Or because you, you go blue, your lips go blue when yeah, you die, we, we, right? Yeah, I, I got so that. it's all going wrong. I got that much. Yeah? So um, where, where have we got lost? You kind of backed yourself into a corner now, uh, Jim, because every time you shout YOLO like that, you've got to jump out of a second-story window onto a beer pong table. I don't have that many beer pong tables. Like breaking the beer pong table. Okay. It's just something oh, that's yeah. got to be done. Yeah, I'll set up a beer pong table for next time. Excellent. Talking of time. I've actually got a fic here I've read that I'd like to shout out. Oh, really? Go for it. Yeah. Uh, this is... This has a bit of backstory to it, too, but it's very heartwarming. This is called Iro 2 and Iki's Excellent Adventure. Oh, a Bill so, and Ted crossover. Iro 2 is Zuko's grandson, I want to say. Okay. He's definitely a descendant of Zuko. Uh, uh, Iki is... Ang's second youngest granddaughter. Mm -hmm. They're from the Legend of Korra era. Okay. They are both cousins, and uh, this is a time travel fic. They um, they go back in time. Is it in and a phone booth? No. Oh. Ah. No, We're just it's not. To see how, uh, they how Bill and Ted yes. Get. They they get lost <laughs> in the spirit world, and uh, oh, they okay. ask to go back. Iki says, "I wish for you to take us back," and the spirit goes, "Okay." And they and the spirit sends them back. Just back in time. Back in time. I to, see. To the Jasmine Dragon, a tea shop run by uh, Iro and Zuko. Oh, during... nice! Oh my God, it's it's a time tra it's a time traveling coffee shop. AU. It's a time traveling coffee shop. Au. Um, yes. The first thing Iki does is she notices someone dressed in Airbender robes, and he's got the tattoos, the Airbending Master tattoos. Oh. And the first thing she says is. Oi, what's that fraud doing here? I know the only airbending master, and it's not you. Sorry, I know the only two living airbending masters, and neither of them are you. You haven't earned those tattoos. And one of them is. Not realising she's talking to her grandfather, age yes. 10. <laughs> and, Awkward. Yeah. And he's so, he does the, the airbending trick that he always does. And he's like, oh shit, the you, yeah, the marbles. <laughs> And he's like, yeah, I am one. Oh. I, I got them for inventing the air scooter. 
He's like, what? You didn't invent the air scooter, my granddad did. Fuck off. <laughs> I doubt she said fuck off. No, she didn't. I'm paraphrasing because I can't find the quote. Uh, after a while, Iroh realizes, Iroh 2 realizes where they are. And he's like, okay, we can't disrupt the timeline or anything. We, we must Explains it to Iki and her jaw drops. He's like, oh shit, I call Grandpa Rang a fake. Why didn't you stop me? <laughs> And yeah, it's really wholesome. And like the notes make oh, he faints. The notes uh, really made me quite happy for it. So, Ang meeting the first Airbender in years through happy tears, hey. which is like yeah, oh. that's nice. Like this taught Ang that yeah, he's not the only one out there. Yeah, and he's not going to be the only one in future. That's it. That is quite nice. And that's very wholesome. So yeah. I enjoyed this fic for that reason. So I wanted to shout it out. Quite fluffy. Oh. Sorry, Grace, I cut you off there. No, you didn't. Okay. Know. You saw nothing. <laughs> no, I didn't. I blurted that faster than I meant. To. Okay, yeah. So I'm kind of sad. Uh, Iro two didn't get to have a chat with Iro one. This fic could really do with a second chapter, uh, as all the comments have said. Hmm. Uh, I hope it comes true. I might leave a comment saying, "I hope you see this, and I hope you make more." Please. Yeah, yo, do more of this, please, anonymous author. Yeah, please and thank you. Oh, so doing anything with Discord is a nightmare for me. I feel like it's like a summoning circle. I can only show up to the other plane if I'm summoned. Grace, consider you summoned. I have summoned thee. Is, th- is this how it works? I've summoned you to hear one yes. of the worst words you're ever going to hear. Moist. Are you ready? Not moist. <laughs> is it worse than moist? Splooge bending. Oh, no. Christ. This is Gay Panic with That's a K by Lust Lily. Splooge bending. Uh, the main ship here is. Uh, oh, won't you? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, it's Toph. It's kind of Toph and Sokka. Toph uh, wants to have a kid. Has no intention of doing anything with a man. So nature finds a way. By splooge bending. By splooge bending. I mean, it's mostly I water, am so right? So confused. I su- I suppose. I'm so confused. Yeah. Uh, Sokka is a sperm donor for Toph. Oh. Splooge okay. bending. So sorry for making you read that word. Yeah. That's... Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Lucy. So... Lee. They're not sorry. They decided to write it and leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> there I suppose. Yeah, you can't really apologise for it and then leave it in. <laughs> but I can. Re- I can respect. That is them. like wandering yeah. into ro- wandering into a room and going like, "Hey guys, moist," and then just leaving. Exactly. <laughs> Intergenerational trauma. You're not kidding. Mm. A meditation on the things we pass down to our children. Is this Quite high brow, Is this highbrow enough for that? I think it might be. <laughs> you can do both. Yeah, there's a lot of it, I suppose. It, what I've learned, and mm-hmm. if I've learned anything about fan fiction, is that you can have highs and lows, and Everything whatever in else in between. Mm. God knows, Guardians of Galaxy did oh, that the God. other day. Shit, the bed. Yeah. Uh, warning for anyone: the if you want to go crying, see, I was crying. <laughs> Nightmare fuel of a film. Good film, ultimately. That's a comedy as well. Yeah. So it's just like... But uh, too many animal experiments for my tastes. Talking of MCUs, I see you've posted something in the Mothman Zuko cinematic universe. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> the other MCU. Wow. My favourite MCU. Yeah, this is my favourite MCU this is... at this point. <laughs> this is. <laughs> this is by. I'm... Baby, you light up my world, brackets like nobody else, by Sifu Hot Bam. <laughs> I could really do with this having the same budget that the other MCU has in terms of making it onto the big screen. Well, where Zuko's just a, 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 man, a man with the characteristics where's of moths. Zuko is 50% hawk moth. So, fluffy yes. antennae, attracted to lights... Got wings. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> In fact, I'm I'm sure we've explained on the show why moths are atta- attracted to lights. We have. Yeah. In fact, there's an entire episode called Next Moth Facts because that didn't make it into the full episode, <laughs> but it was interesting enough that I put it out as bonus content. There is. So if you if you dear listener <laughs> would would like to hear why moths <laughs> follow lights, then please go listen to that episode. Mm-hmm. Can I? I would like to quickly draw back the attention to the fantastic. Yes, I just and noticed. Uh, and sampled from in order in to optimize gay whimsy. <laughs> <laughs> Author's knowledge of entomology has been oh, selectively yep. sampled yep. from in, in order to optimize gay whimsy. I'll have you know. <laughs> 
Also, in that soccer hit Zuko with his car. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's how they meet. It's a meet. I cute. see. It's not too bad, but non graphic <laughs> wilderness first aid happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Rated T for situationally warranted swearing and mild, th- mild horny thoughts. Mm. I see. Exactly. Oh, the summer is fantastic. And there's 5,000 words of this. Uh, well, what I really liked about it is it says, An unlikely Mothman Zuko Zucker meets cute with more moth facts by volume than anyone asked for. <laughs> and he's, And they're not wrong. I've gone through this and they have integrated moth facts. <sighs> Into into how they meet and and like, uh, Sokka's asking him like, oh, what do you need? What are this oh, and that? It's like, oh yeah, and he's like, I need liquids, but not dairy, <laughs> <laughs> kind of shit like that. And he's like, and oh, it's it's so good, it's so funny. Yeah, if... it, it fills a void <laughs> where I I love I love like documentaries. <laughs> And then fan fiction, and this has like merged the two together. Like I could read this in the David Attenborough voice, and I just, I just love it. So if you go to the <laughs> very bottom of the fic, there is just moth facts at the end. <laughs> I may have entire to, section. I may have to read this. I was gonna say this is probably making it onto part two, isn't it? Yeah, Zuko's junk <laughs> screaming is extrapolated from an actual anti-bat hawk. Moth mm-hmm. defense system. Moth defense. They rub their gentle claspers, yes, for that kind of clasping together in a way that produces ultrasound, which signal jams bat sonar. Wow, okay. <laughs> we learn something. Yeah. Sifu Hot Dam, I will follow moths. your career with great interest. Yes. <laughs> in fact, I'm doing that right now. <laughs> yep, do a follow. Mm hmm. I'm hoping all of your fix are this world researched, because there's a medical one here as well. <laughs> I like this. To the best of my knowledge, this is responsible wilderness first aid practice. You should, of course, seek professional medical attention when it is available <laughs> to you, and not refer to uh, the anecdotal accounts of an AO3 user named Sifu Hotman <laughs> in the case of an actual emergency. I trust Sifu Hotman. Which is a which, which is a shame, because I trust mm-hmm. you. <laughs> Honestly, you know things about moths. That's good enough for me. I Yeah, I, moths, humans, it's the same difference. It's I fine. don't know, moths are adorable. <laughs> Not yeah. all humans are. Yeah. Also yeah, true. Humans are shit. Mm. Uh, moths are better. You know who, who else <laughs> likes moths and occasionally destroys humans? Big titty moth GF. Close. Sorry, that just came to my head. <laughs> yeah, also, what the fuck? <laughs> I I like how you had that immediately on the like on the shelf behind you to whip out like it was just sat there waiting. All I right. have here a fic called The Ancient World by okay. G hang on let me get that by G O T F A 2. This is a crossover with Godzilla. Oh nice. I don't oh. quite know how yet. I just saw that and I was like aha. I'm guessing it involves Godzilla attacking Republic City. <laughs> Ideally with Azula riding on the back of Godzilla. It's it's got the word kaiju in it, which sort of gives you the oh hang on. Well the United Refined Life. Yeah, I guess it's the Avatar's no, job think... to calm the giant monsters out there. The past day was simply put a fluster cuck. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Yeah, it just ends with Godzilla showing up. Usually the king of the, the monsters, of the Katara, so... Not always. Hmm. It's also the midway. I'm hoping this is... Um, to be continued. Uh, As that's how it looks. I'm not reading it, I'm just spooling to the bottom. Grace, which one's Dabby from My Hero Academia? Is the one... Is the villain with the, the cut-out face? Is, you know, the The... He, he looks like he's got massive bags under his eyes that stapled ah. on, and he's got like a okay, smile. Okay, that makes perfect sense. I've got a crossover with My Hero Academia here, right? Yeah. Called Two Wannabe Arsonists a- Get Swapped and Accidentally Solve All Kinds of Problems, but Not Without Giving Their Sibling a Headache. Wannabe yeah. Arsonists? <laughs> Azula and Dabby Swap Places. Yeah, they are very similar. See, on top of Zuko and Todoroki looking very similar. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the face department with the scar, 
and having very similar mm, stunted daddy issues mm-hmm. and personality. Uh, they both have siblings that are absolute psychos who control blue fire. Huh. <laughs> Sorry, not her. Also, they've got a, a protagonist who channels the power of his past lives to uh, master more powers. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, that's good as well. I'm seeing a lot here. Oh, Pepper, how much did you get on your fur? <laughs> oh. Oh, my God, you dick. <laughs> She can't wash her the top of her head very well. Oh. Okay, one last thing from me. So, who would you say would be... Grace, who would you say is your favourite villain? Oh my god, I like all the villains. What are you on about? I like too many. Okay, who is... Who's, okay, after Avaros, who is the most glam villain you can think of? Uh, Girahim. Who's that? He's the villain in Legend of Zelda. Sky there is a glamour sword. villain than that, that you know. Is there? Yes. Uh, He's one of the most fabulous men in all of fiction. There's a lot of fabulous men in fiction. He's got a unicorn horn. There is still a lot of fabulous men in The it. unicorn horn does narrow it down, but not as much as you'd like to think. <laughs> I've got a fic here called Rock Nap Aftermath by JT Dog Zone 9999. Instead of waking up in Italy in the 1930s, the Pillar Man wake up halfway around the world oh, in a much different time world. And drama God. ensues. God. This is Jojo's Bizarre Adventure and Avatar The Last Airbender. You were making a Jojo reference. Yes. Because the glam is... man is, of course, Cars from Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. <laughs> Cars, Wamu, and ACDC wake up. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it's not, his name's not actually ACDC, is it? Because that's a band. It is pronounced ACDC. ACDC. <laughs> ACDC. Yeah. A- sorry, SCDC. Everyone's favourite Aztec bodybuilders. <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, apologies. This only involves the Cabbage Man from Avatar. I guess that's fine too. Is he. Well, I apologise. Is he Jojo fine. in this? I hope so. <laughs> Is he a Joe star, cabbage man? <laughs> well, I th- I'm assuming the pillar men just destroy his cabbage stand. <laughs> <laughs> that I, would be fitting. I like the idea that the avatars are busy fighting Ozai, but the real battle, a more opposing <laughs> threat, the pillar men. He's a cabbage back. man trying to defeat. <laughs> he's he's got his own shit oh, going on. That's the point. The cabbage man was traveling the world, right? Yeah, he had his own mission. Do you reckon he was mastering Hamon? I, I think he, could he was been. finding all the all the vamp all the pillar men mm. and like taking them down one by one. That's the point, actually. Um, That's why he's got a firebending. Yeah, firebending's about. Oh no, it's it's an internal flame, isn't it? Guys, uh, yeah. yeah. What? Um, you know, one of the tags is don't examine this too closely. <laughs> 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 I want to. No, I I feel like we should heed the tag warning. It's also don't try this at home. Uh, there is yeah. also another tag that says don't try this at home. So uh, there you go. Yeah. I'm just wondering if firebending would work like ham on for the purpose of defeating the pillar men. I have try, try that at home. See what happens. I will. Yeah, I'll spray. get I'll get some Links Africa and a lighter, and I'll try and fight an Aztec bodybuilder. <laughs> I can I can do you one better, James. I've got freeze spray, and basically you spray it, and whatever you spray begins to frost up and like lose temperature. But here's what's great: it's flammable. So if you light a fire under it, it goes. <laughs> it turns into a fire flame instead. It's multi-purpose. Ah. It freezes so- you and burns you. Freezes you and burns you, but not with freezer burn. Well, probably with freezer mm. burn, but also yeah, with freezer burn. it's a spray. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't try anything we suggest at home. No, please don't. We're, we're not responsible for any uh, injuries or we're death barely... that may occur. I don't think you can buy it normally. I think it's one of those things that the public aren't allowed to touch, so it's all right. <laughs> well, I'll say that and there's going to be a reply of some randoms like... Guess what I got. And Guess what I got hold of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. For those who haven't figured this out yet, 
the the character Grace is most like an avatar is of course Azula. I think I think I'm not nearly as prodigal as Azula, but thank you. <laughs> I think you're less prone to breakdowns as well. Oh, I don't know. You should you should see me. <laughs> we do see you. I think I'm just old enough to have alcohol, and that's where um, Azula fails because she's not old enough yet. So she hasn't. Yeah, if they let her have a drinking problem. She hasn't. Yeah, she's not mature enough to have a drinking. If she got some of that Emperor's smile, then. Yeah, to be fair. She might have been okay. um, I'd like to see a lightning bend with that, with like a couple of pints down, and that'd be funny. I may have uh, have found something, starring the uh, the Cabbage Man. Oh. Okay. You... Should I explain the Cabbage Man first? You can. I will okay. give you a chance to explain the Cabbage Man before I post this. So every so often, there'll be like a chase in Avatar, and someone's they'll a stand will be destroyed as they run through the streets doing their chase sequence. I'm guessing it's the same man. It's always owned by the same man who always yells, "My cabbages!" <laughs> and. That is his only line of dialogue. And 70 years later, in Legend of Korra, he runs a major technology company called Cabbage Corp. <laughs> because of course he does. And at some point, Cabbage Corp is destroyed in the course of the Avatar's shenanigans. Oh, like, his cabbage business corp. goes on. His business just goes <laughs> under. And his only line is, My Cabbage Corp! <laughs> <laughs> and that really tickled me. Oh, but yeah, he tried excellent. so hard. Yeah, and every, it's always the Avatar. <laughs> he tried so hard and got so far. In the end. Go on, Nick, post your fake before this becomes another musical. Right then. I've posted this. I'm just going to await your reaction. Uh, could you post it in fix for part one, please? Yep. My bad. Just to keep them all grouped together. So this is The Cabbages of Love. This is The Cabbages of Love by Lydia X. Erostomia. Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> Um, yeah. Sweet baby Ray's barbecue sauce. This is, yeah. It was a dare, I swear. That's some of the tags. Uh, but yeah, this is, uh, the summary is Mark Zuckerberg finds himself in a forbidden romance with a certain cabbagey man, tangled in a love that cannot be. Immerse yourself oh. in a love story more iconic than the notebook and more heartbreaking than the Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> More <laughs> than the Titanic. I will oh, also man. mention the word counts on this. I don't think it's finished because it was last updated uh, the 29th of April 2023, which was yesterday as uh, as we record this. The word count, however, <laughs> is exactly 666. Six, six, six. Six. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't even be mad if they stopped writing it and just wanted to keep that word count perfect. Yeah, I know. Like, just one cracky chapter and <laughs> that's it. I'm sorry, I have to read this line. Mark temporarily gets lost in his labyrinth of home. Brackets. Regressibly, Bowie-less. <laughs> <laughs> there is no Bowie in my labyrinth. <laughs> Masterfully done. I'd like to fanfix and chill that. Ooh. So Lynn, uh, Toph's daughter. We have here teenage Lynn asking her blind, stoic, tomboy mother where babies come from. Oh, this is volcanoes, okay. wasp bees, and humming flies. Adolescent Lin Bei Fong asks her parents where babies come from. It goes as well as you'd expect. Rated T for discussions of fertile valleys. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, yeah. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. I did not notice the relationship tags. Azula slash Toph Bei Fong. Oh, my Christ. That's a rare one. That is interesting, yeah. Hmm. Rare pairing. So, it is a mystery who uh, Lin's dad is. At least in the show. Okay. It's Azula. <laughs> what if it was Azula? <laughs> I couldn't believe Azula would manage it somehow. Yeah, I could see it. Like, there was a lot of fan theories that Sokka and Toph hooked up, but um, mm. I don't know. I don't... And then, then in the show, she was like, no, it was this guy. Yeah. And was she like, can... We don't know who this guy is. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, yeah, it's just a. Like... <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, maybe Lynn instead. It's like, oh, guys. <laughs> Stop trying to it make doesn't it have to be a main character. It can just be some guy yeah. that she met after she was 10. A lot later yeah. after she yeah, was 10. Yeah, a lot later. Mm -hmm. Eight plus years after. Minimum. Minimum. 
So Azula's response to how to where do babies come from, Azula says, I wouldn't know. I've never been into self-degradation. Oh, for fuck's sake, <laughs> what an answer. <laughs> That's peak Azula, isn't it? I could, every time I hear of Azula and something she says, I already hear the do 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 like whenever she comes on, mm. it's just all that. <sighs> oh, that. I would ask your mother to draw you a picture, but her artistry skills are as apt as her reading and writing skills. Wow. <laughs> as Azula says about Toph, who is blind. <laughs> she... God, I forget Ouch. how many blind jokes are actually in Avatar yeah, in the like... first place. <laughs> of course, <laughs> Toph Tof can't read and write. That's not a fair thing to say to her. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have to men I've not looked into this yet, but I do have to mention this fic at the very least, just because it has a fantastic tag. Mm. So this is Salvage by Muffin Lance. The okay. relationships include Hakoda and Zuko. What? Zuko and the Water Tribe. And Zuko and responsible adult role models. <laughs> is Zuko just why is he banging his dad? No, sorry, it's an and not a slash. Oh thank fuck for that. <laughs> it's it's a sit down and, and discuss. Okay, so so is this is this essentially Zuko? Everyone finds out that Zuko's dad was a dick, and everyone's like, "Okay, we now need to role model this boy." <laughs> it looks that way. We, you have so many dads now, bro. <laughs> you can't move for d- good dads now, bro. <laughs> God, it's in so many collections. Yeah, this seems very popular. It's also got multiple different translations and several podfix. Oh, okay. Mid-season Considering one, Zuko himself. is held for ransom by Chief Hakoda. Ozai replies to the Water Tribes. Ozai replies to the Water Tribes' demands are A plus parenting. Hakoda is concerned. Oh, so okay. Ha- Hakoda has kidnapped Zuko. Yeah. And tried to ransom him off to the Fire Lord. The Fire Lord has presumably done the same thing Stalin did and was just like, lol, keep him. <laughs> oh, and Hakoda's just like, <laughs> bro, it's your son, dude. <laughs> so. Then he gets a better dad, by the looks of things. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> and that's nice. I think that's what he needs. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, definitely needs that father figure coming on. Yeah, I see why this is in so many collections. That's very wholesome. The dad Zuko needed. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, any dad would have sort of improved Zuko. I mean, he had Iro, but like... Yeah. Too little, too late, sadly. Yeah. No, I had him. For, what are you talking about? I had him for like three years. Yeah, it's not. That's not enough to undo everything the Fire Lord did to him. Oh, I guess. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> right, let's that have another. That's funny though. <laughs> Damn, Muffin Lance is prolific. Like a lot of the ones when I sort by hits come out of Muffin Lance. Oh, is this the author? Yeah, sorry, the yeah, author yeah, Muffin yeah. Lance. I was like, which character is this? <laughs> <laughs> I never actually got round to adding cracks in my search. Let me um, let me spice that up a bit. Would you like a backstory for Cabbage Man? Maybe. <laughs> Here is I can't a- help but notice we're getting a lot of Cabbage Man fix. Yes, from you, Nick. we are. Are you sure you haven't searched Cabbage Man? I absolutely haven't searched Cabbage Man, but I have put crack in my search. <laughs> I see. This is only the buried sprout blossoms by Anonymous, and this is a backstory for the Cabbage Man, in case you want to go and read it. Okay. And literally, Wait, it what? is... a long and very well written backstory to to Cabbage Man. <laughs> Is it? Yeah. Oh my god. Like it's only oh, 986 god. words. Um, Lao Bakai translates to Old Cabbage. <laughs> oh my god. Brilliant. Oh wow. Okay there are two interesting tags here. Mm-hmm. Uncle Iroh is a good uncle and Iroh being a bad uncle. Okay. Which one am I hitting? I don't want him to be a bad uncle. Yeah. Same. I'm going with good uncle. So I have what would probably be classed as a uh, bad uncle, right? Okay. Has a stash of fireworks, which he's always like messing with, and he's like, oh, come and have a look at this. This is what I've done. Uh, like, he has a 12 bore shotgun, which I've shot. That's not a bad uncle. That's just a disaster uncle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, he, he lost so... his uh, eyebrows and all the body hair on the front of his body because he tried to light a chimney with a firework and it blew up and like, <laughs> hurled him backwards against the wall 
So, yeah. Uh, sort of shit I'll do. <laughs> That'll clear it. Grace is a bad uncle, to be fair. Yeah, Grace is the worst uncle. I'm a vodka aunt. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So, there are 1,000 fix of Uncle Iroh being a good uncle. And there are 19 Iroh being a bad uncle. Okay. So it is... We are overwhelmingly... Iroh is a good uncle. As is fitting mm. by the sounds of things. Oh, for sure. Clearly um, those other ones are like alternate universe. Yeah, I'm just having a look to see what kind of bad uncle stuff he gets up to. Mm. It's mostly just him <laughs> not saving Zuko and Zuko being all irredeemable bad boy. Oh, no. I thought... I was hoping it was going to be a bit more footloose and fancy free and more like... Him just trying to hit off with June all the time. <laughs> but so yeah, there's a badass like assassin uh, lady who has a has a sniffing anteater. Iro is a on. man okay. of culture, and like it can paralyze people with its tongue, and it accidentally paralyzes the its owner. And <laughs> Uncle Iro falls down and catches her in her arms. And he's just lying there with her paralysed on top of him in in his arms. And Zuko's just like, Uncle, I didn't see you get hit by the shoe." <laughs> and he's just like, shh. <laughs> <laughs> so... Just enjoying the moment. <laughs> and she's just not happy. <laughs> Incredible. That's as bad as he gets. So this is June. <laughs> she's, she's a goth GF. Uh, yeah, you can see that. Yep. And Iro Iro simps for that goth GF, unabashedly so. <laughs> and Iro is a man of culture, and good on him. I see. <sighs> Fuck's sake. So I respect that. I still feel sorry for June having this old man just sort of like, sort of lech on her a little bit. <laughs> but um. Yeah, but it's Iro. Like... Uh, that's the problem. It's Iro. <laughs> it's really conflicting. On the one hand, not consensual. On the other hand, like. It's... He's such a good guy. <laughs> Why would you yeah. do this? Like, I don't think he would ever do anything. He'd just sort of sit her down and give advice about tea. Yeah, he'd give her tea. Yeah. <laughs> I'm assuming bad Uncle Iroh drinks coffee, incidentally. <laughs> yeah, nothing, like nothing good can come from drinking coffee. It's the evil mirror of uh, universe Iroh who drinks coffee and gives really terrible advice. <laughs> He's probably got a Trump 2024 sticker on the back of whatever he drives. Yeah, a f- oh, fucking for fuck's sake. make the Fire Nation great again or something like that. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I saw... <laughs> I saw this fic. It reminded very m- myself very much of um, the Almighty Tim's work. <laughs> Um, it's is... called yeah, go ahead, The Woes Chris. of Being Unbearably Hot and Other Misadventures by Kit Puppy 92 <laughs> Summary, Zuko's a firebender. Zuko is not supposed to tell anyone that he's a firebender. Zuko fails miserably and is a flaming hot disaster by emphasis on flaming. <laughs> there are more bad puns in here that I care to count but knock yourselves out trying. Is this pure chaos? Yes. Yes it is. Have fun regardless. And it is quite funny. I wrote this at 3am for a friend because of a bet, and look at we look at where we are now. Happy Pride Month. <laughs> <laughs> this looks delightful. Zuko brushes dark ebony black luscious hair out of his golden Perfect. fiery eyes. <laughs> 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 yes, and it carries on like this all the way through. Ah, oh, yeah. He wanted to turn to an, be- a new leaf, which began in this very tea shop. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah, it's it's basically when he's working in the tea shop and trying to hide the fact he's a firebender from everyone, but only in this he fails miserably and Jet's the anti-fire nation, anti-firebender bad mm. boy notices <laughs> and chaos well, it's, ensues. It's how it's two edgy bad boys meeting, and it's it's sort of inevitable that they end up smooching. I love customer service, Zuko. <laughs> <laughs> He's just not built for it, and I yeah. identify with that on such That's a level. Fair. <laughs> I myself having to do that at one point. <laughs> customer service is not something I'm built for. No, though I would have liked to see you in customer service mode. I've never seen that. <laughs> I work behind a bar, and you know what? Despite being rude to everyone, everyone found it delightful. <laughs> well, which was very strange. I could not. I there was a point because I was so bad at maths, I had no idea what. to like what the change was because people weren't using cards mm-hmm. instant cards so much that then it was still change 
And so I was like giving too much change back all the time and then like <laughs> taking, like not giving enough back other times. But somehow it would manage to balance out perfectly at the end of each month and I don't quite understand how. But yeah, mm. hot shit. There's actually a lot of Star Trek crossovers. I won't go too far into it because uh, I know Grace is isn't that, a fan. Is that a promise? It's a promise I've immediately broken because the username made me laugh. Okay. This is the third avatar by piss underscore cracker. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. A hundred years ago, the Fire Nation attacked. In the chaos... <laughs> <laughs> In the chaos, avatars Aang and Sequa have passed. Now it's up to Jim, the newest avatar, to figure <laughs> out how to save the world from the wrath of Fire Lord Khan. Captain Kirk this. is the avatar. Yeah. <laughs> I might read this to be <laughs> I <God>. am the Avatar. <laughs> Mastering the four elements. Damn it, Jim, I'm a fire I'm a firebender, not a Hmm. Captain, this bending is most illogical. <laughs> Damn it, oh Jim, God. I'm a waterbender, yep. not a doctor. <laughs> 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 Uh, I can't wait medicals, Captain. I can only earth bend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's... I'm sorry, Grace. Yeah. <laughs> it, I'm not. It's okay. <laughs> I'm not. I, I got to do my best Bones impression, and I had fun. Captain's Logs. Oh, dropped my phone. Captain's Logs, Stardate 239.7. We've landed on Kiyoshi Islands <laughs> <laughs> to fight the Fire Lord. <laughs> I mean, Kirk does kind of have the Avatar thing going, because he, instead of fighting it, he'll do, like, one big speech about friendship, and then uh, that'll end up. Hmm. I'm sorry, Grace, I've bored you now, haven't I? <laughs> oh, I was reading things, and, like, I've still got pictures of Avaros on my computer screen. <laughs> but I'm just, like... <sighs> We've lost Grace to Avaros. Uh, again. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, time. I mean, I mean, fair enough. You know, See, I think we've all been lost to Avaros at least once. It's, it's. He's got the voice. He's got the looks, and he's Elf Satan. Like, elf what more Satan. do you want? Yeah. So, can he go in the the category of villains we forgive because they're hot? I don't forgive Avaros. Okay. I'm on his side. I don't need to forgive him. <laughs> <laughs> what? The world shall burn <laughs> under his rule. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Bow or Grace be never considered him a villain because he's that handsome. <laughs> Bow or be buried, James. <laughs> he, I get right, it. Is... <laughs> yeah, I think I think we've had enough. <laughs> In- incredible. Um, yeah, I think that's what finished it off. And it wasn't yep. even anything from the Avatar universe. No. But fucking it was... three dog man. I mean. We will be covering Dragon Prince eventually. Mm. We, we're just waiting for the right time. I see. Which we completely missed the window of when the new season came out. But we'll do it eventually. It's yeah. just we've got a very long list of shows, of everything to cover, to be honest. I, I feel well, like... the possibilities are endless. Mm-hmm. So, you know, whether we do this show for another five years or another 50, we'll always have something to talk about. Exactly. Uh, if you want to add more? it in, you don't have to. Yeah, let's let's get it in. Zuko, Zuko the Blue Spirit by Precious Zuko. Oh, the... Okay, so the Blue Spirit was a mysterious masked figure with two swords who would occasionally come in and help the Avatar. Ah. Turns out, Zuko is the Blue Spirit. Spoiler, oh, I see. Hell. So he's like the, the yeah. mysterious stranger perk. Yeah, he was doing the no one captures the Avatar but me thing. Ah, I see. And putting on a mask to then uh, go kick ass. So I want to quickly just read the summary because I I like I really like the idea of this. Zuko works in his uncle's tea shop, but he also worked as an agent for OWCA, his uncle's secret agency. He is the nemesis of Sokka, a ridiculous guy who's ridiculously hot, but also doesn't recognise Zuko, even though he's a regular at the tea Ooh. shop. It's very frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> is this That's enemy very... to lovers? It's like a it's like a man from Uncle fucking coffee shop A E. <laughs> it's a bit Persona Five as well, with like the I'll catch this man and wherever he is, I'll stop him, and he's working in the coffee shop all along, going. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for God's sake. 
yeah, oh, that, that, looks, like that looks a lot of fun. It does. Yeah. This. Zuko, the blue spirit. For a moment, all Zuko could do was stare at Sokka in shock. Do you really not realise what the fuck? So one knew the other guy, mm-hmm. and the other. <laughs> Yeah, I've I need to read this, this properly. Yeah, I've not read this, <laughs> but I suspect there's a lot of like cat and mouse double entendre conversations <laughs> in the classic detective versus master thief style. Yes, the at least that's what I'm hoping. No, no, no. Look, listen to this. Mm-hmm. You <laughs> okay? Are you sure you should be talking about your evil scientist plans with just anyone? Zuko asked. You know, you're not just anyone, Zuko. Uh, Soccer scoffed. And then Zuko's like, oh. And he's like, you're my favourite tea shop server. And he's like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Oh, nice. I love I love idiots in love. Oh, so good. Mm, same. So good. Whoa. <laughs> okay, I just... I was scrolling what? through, I just hit something in all caps. What? Hang on. Are we uh, going to hear every one of those capital letters? Yeah, you are. Alright, oh, hang dear. on. Azula gasps loudly, a hand on her chest. I am a lesbian. Do you know how much pussy I would lose out on if I let my Jews lapse? Do you? Spirits, Azula. Zuko gag loudly. All of it, Zuko. I would lose out on all the pussy in Ba Sing Se. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> there you go. That's what of I read. Of course you liked that bit. <laughs> I didn't like it. I just saw it was in all caps. Just out of nowhere. Just the words, I would lose out on all of the pussy in Ba Sing Se. I can see that uh, your training and skills gleaned from fanfics and chill are serving you well there. <laughs> Speaking of which, dear listener, if you would yeah. like to hear more of us, then go listen to fanfics and chill. Join us on Friday when you're going to hear about Thanos fucking a corn man. Plug. Yeah. Three what? three pins since we're British. <laughs> That's news to Grace. <laughs> <laughs> I must. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Our we're second covering. show? What? <laughs> no. <laughs> but, but I feel like you were just going to spring this on me on the day and then you forgot. Oh. <laughs> You're also going to... I think I've mentioned it. No. I I definitely mentioned it to you before. You have mentioned it. What are you it? on about? <laughs> Our next fic. It's about... It, the ship is Thanos and a sexy corn man. I don't remember this. We got emailed it. <laughs> I don't remember. And I told you guys about it, and I said, hey, do you want to read about Thanos shagging a corn man? And we were all on board. Oh, my God. I must have been a couple of pints in, but all right. Grace has had a drink since then. As Grace will probably oh. forget by next time. Yes. Oh, yeah, I will, to be honest. And be surprised cool. all over again. Yeah, what have we learned today? <laughs> it's that time of the show. Yeah, we're wrapping up. Everyone's got the hots for Flamio Hotman. Flamio Hotman. Sifu Hotman. Wasn't Flamio Hotman? It's it's what Ang likes to call people because that was like back in the day when the he when the Fire Nation wasn't at war. It was like the slang back then. Oh. So then a hundred years later, he's trying yeah, I knew out I'd like heard it. I thought it Fire was... Nation slang on modern day Fire Nation people, and they're like, "What the fuck?" That's what my granddad used to say. <laughs> I was trying to remember, like I thought it was on. one of his disguise names when he was trying to blend in. No, Wang Fire was like <laughs> Sokka's disguise. Okay, yeah, we need to go back. Hold on. Wang There's one Fire. And in the comics, Wang Fire makes another appearance. Yes, we need to search for Wang Fire. <laughs> I forgot about Wang Fire. <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's just Sokka with a ginormous, like, moustache and beard on him. Like, acting like a complete crazy uncle. <laughs> he just sort of grabs a bale of straw and just staples it to his face and oh. just uses the voice, Wang Fire! <laughs> <laughs> I am Wang Fire and this is my wife, Sapphire. Sapphire Fire. Fire. Hello, Sapphire <laughs> <Yeah>. Fire. <laughs> nice to meet you. Okay. Sorry, I have to talk about this one more fic. <laughs> this always happens. I need to start with good ideas first. Um, this is a fic called... Hang on, let me post it. This is Totally Legit Certified Therapist Wang Fire by Mad Buck. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Zuko has confused feelings about soccer. He doesn't know how to respond. Ang recommends a therapist. And, of course, the therapist. The ther- is Wang Fire, who is just soccer with a fake bitch. <laughs> This is a soccer Zuko fic. Zuko just talks about his feelings about soccer. He's like, the problem is, it's between me and soccer. I love him. Wang stops taking notes. What? <laughs> he's so amazing. He's so confident and strong. And Wang's like, yeah, he's pretty hard, isn't he? 
Oh yes. Oh, this is beautiful. Oh yes. Who who wrote that? Uh, this Who's this is that? by Madbug. Madbug. Shit up. <laughs> Yes, I want to read. Yeah, Zuko was just asking. Oh, I don't know how to approach it. And my father's like, "Have you tried kissing him?" <laughs> <laughs> Zuko, only every day of my life. Well, you should do it. <laughs> what? Kiss him? <laughs> oh, this is fantastic. Though apparently it was inspired by a fic called. I don't think that man's ever been to therapy school. Oh shit! This okay. There's an entire series of certified therapist Wang Fire. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so this is a second fic about Zuko needing a therapist and Aang recommending Wang Fire. <laughs> this one is less shippy by the looks of it, but it's. <laughs> do you think Aang? Uh, oh do you think Aang knows? <laughs> I, yeah. What I like is Zuko is stupid enough to fall yeah. for it. <laughs> Like, oh, bless him. He's not very wise. <laughs> oh, Zuko. I'm going to read a quick segment from... Sorry, I'll post this second one. This is called I Don't Think That Man's Ever Been to Therapy School by Palantir. Only Palan The I is a one. Okay. Uh, let me put that in here. There was a problem with Wang Fire, and Zuko noticed it as soon as he sat down on the couch. He was hot. Way too hot. A real dilf. Zuko didn't even <laughs> have a thing for older guys. And yet... So far, Lord Zuko, Wang said. What brings you into my office today? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, <no>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the therapy session of Zuko and uh, Wang Fire. Who is definitely not soccer. <laughs> this guy. So one of the tags on this is featuring certified DILF therapist Wang Fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like, therapy for the DILFs, or is he a DILF himself? <laughs> <laughs> he is the Dilf he himself. Is the Dilf. Despite being like 14 and just wearing a fake beard. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. This is fantastic. I'm glad I'm glad this is a whole thing. <laughs> Nick, you really need to watch this. I, 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 think, sure I, do. I think I need like, to at least if, go through a few episodes if, to yeah, to mm -hmm. have a look what's going on. Skip skip the Great Divide. Yep. <laughs> that's that's all I can There's say. an episode you could watch called The Ember Island Players. It was essentially written as like yes. a. Re it was, it's one of the best filler episodes ever written for TV, because they do it as a recap, but it's a recap of them going to the theater and watching these guys reenact what has happened in the show thus far. Yeah, watching watching villain propaganda of yes. who they are and what they are. <laughs> so they're portrayed in a really shit. Line. Right, I see. <laughs> and they die at the end and everything, and they're just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's, yeah. Yeah. If you need a crash course on what happens in Avatar, that's probably the one to go to. Right. But I recommend just watching the show because it, it's aged pretty well. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. I'd say it holds up. <laughs> okay. I think that's all we have time for. Unless you guys want to weigh in on any additional comments. Hmm. I think that's pretty much it. I'm going to have a tough time uh, choosing something to read. Um, mm -hmm. So I may have to watch the source material this week it's worth a look yeah and we have barely scratched the surface so we might have to come back at some point mm. potentially just for legend Indeed. of korra because i've barely got to see any kavira i'm i'm all in on soccer zuko i think is my OTT. i had a feeling you might be <laughs> specifically wang fire wang fire, <laughs> wang fire. <laughs> grace what's the name of that business entrepreneur in korra Varric. Varric, that's his name oh yeah he's i'm good. just curious how many fics there are about Varric from Avatar. Because the thing about Korra is it's it's sort of the 1920s, and there's this sort of yes. businessman who does bullshit. Okay. And he's one of my favourite characters. I think he'd probably be one of yours as well, Nick. Right, I see. Imagine Cave Johnson, but 1920s and Asian. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm up for that. And he's got a long-suffering assistant called Julie, hmm. and there are 500 fix shipping the two of them. Sorry, 200 folks shipping the two of them. Yeah. Nice. That is something I'll look into. Right, enough tangents. We should wrap up the show because I've got a lot of footage now. Yep, fair enough. Thank you. Hang oh, on. Oh. I'm going to post something One in more general thing. if I can. I don't know if this will work. No, I'm going to chicken out and do it in the in the messenger. Okay. We can just, just for the full... Something that happened in the comics with Wang Fire. Okay. Okay. Oh, that... <laughs> so shit, isn't it? You've, you've posted the file 
address from your phone. I know, and I am so upset. (laughs) Right, let's try that again. Not the same thing, but a slightly different version of the thing I did last time. There we go. Right, so that's the comic. Okay, cool. Wang Fire is officially dead because... He faces up. To... <laughs> Look at that face in the yeah. bottom corner. They had a picture of him. <laughs> the Fire Nation is mourning him. Like, they, they loved him. They barely knew him. But they left a lasting impression. Fire Nation's greatest soldier, Wang Fire. <laughs> yep. Just look at that fake beard as well. Like that is majestic. It is. It is. It's just a six. It's just a fourteen-year-old. <laughs> With a really cool fake beard. And everyone thought he had like a wife and a yeah. kid, and it was just like they're all really sad. I I will personally see to it his memory lives on. Like, bro. <laughs> It's like watering plastic plants that belong to your dead wife. <laughs> Ugh, Wang fire. I did. F- oh oh shit! There it grim. is. Sorry, you've reminded me. I saw some amazing fan art, and I'll put this in the show notes. Oh yeah. Here we go. Also going the same place. Someone made a fan poster of just the legend of Wang fire. <laughs> Excellent. And <laughs> it looks like Glory Hammer cover art. Yeah, it does. Like it's it's bonkers. <laughs> The only element Wangfire bends is the element of surprise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a chainsaw and a shotgun. Suki is clinging to his leg. Toph's driving a motorbike. <laughs> For fuck's sake. It's a work of art. And... The Avatar has to deal with one firebender. Private Wangfire has to deal with the rest. <laughs> 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 Oh, uh, fuck's sake. It's a thing of beauty. <laughs> and I think that's where we're going to end it tonight. <laughs> there is, Unless there's... There oh, is wait. So whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry. One more thing. That's from a Wattpad link. Is this an actual fic? Oh, fingers crossed. Oh, my I... fucking Christ. No, it's not. It's just a collection of memes. I'm sorry. God damn it. I was briefly very excited that someone had written The Legend of Wang Fire. If it turns out they have, that's what I'm bringing for part two. Yep, fair enough. On that note, join us for part two in two weeks. We're going to pick three fix from Avatar that we enjoyed the most, and we're going to talk about them. Uh, yeah, I think that'll do it for us. Thank you for listening if you made it this far, and we hope to hear from you in two weeks. Yep. Yep. Okay, take care, everyone. Good night. Take care. Good night. Good night.